Hey everyone, welcome to the Vienna White Roundtable Season 1, Episode 8. I'm your host, Millie Rouge, and today we have two fantastic guests on today. Our very first guest is David. Hey everybody, I'm, I'm David Unsworth. I'm a local musician here in Edmonton. I, I do some songwriting, I do stuff under my own name, I do some freelancing stuff in cover bands, and I also, I also teach music. Beautiful, and our returning guest, Mr. Pablo. Oh. Hey everybody, I'm Pablo. I'm a returning guest. Uh, I'm a local musician in Edmonton. Uh, I write a little bit of originals and do a couple covers. Yeah. Beautiful. And also, Pablo, I just found out the most interesting fact about you the other day. We have the same birthday. Right? I was going to mention that. <gasps> We're both born on 420, which is a hilarious oh, I did birthday. The only day. <laughs> the, the only, only day, day you should be born. <laughs> Yeah, it's very funny because every time I tell someone, they're like, well, when are you born? And I tell them the day, they're like, ha do you know that you're born on a 420? And I'm a like, 420, bro? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm not? like, I've been born for 25 years, so yes, I know. <laughs> I just, I find it very interesting because it's very rare that I meet people with that same birthday. So when I saw that the other day, I was like, oh. so very exciting. We're going to have a very lonely uh, birthday coming up, but it'll still be. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it, but we'll, we'll make do with what we got. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Okay, everybody, welcome. Um, thank you guys for being here. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked talking about 420, so we're, we're back, we're back. Um, today's topic we are going to be chatting about is actually busking. Ooh. So the two of you, I have seen busking. I have seen you at different events. I've seen you in different places. Um, so I really want to talk about this conversation of busking because I think as common as it is, there's not that many buskers in Edmonton, I would say. Like, it is a different climate, and it's a different experience in Canada busking. So I really want to kind of get your guys' opinions on busking um, and kind of some tips and tricks for people that do want to maybe potentially start busking if it's something they're interested in. Um, so just to start it off, I kind of wanted to open up the table and the question to ask you guys to tell us a little bit more can you describe how you started um from point a to point b of becoming a musician and kind of explain the journey you had just as being a musician to start not talking about the busking but how you got to kind of get to where you are as musicians today so whoever wants to start just open it right up i can i can go first um so i uh i guess i started i've been doing music since i was like i don't know elementary school my mom made me do choir and stuff and I was like no mom I don't want to do this um and then here I am so um and then I picked up guitar in like junior high um was in like band and all that stuff through high school um and then after high school kind of had to decide what I wanted to do with my with my life um so that's kind of when I started going to open mics and and writing stuff and I did some recording like that year out of high school um yeah, and then and then I've been and then I went actually into the McEwen music program like the next oh. year, and so I finished that actually like a year ago, which is yeah. which is crazy. crazy. I'm like, oh, eh? oh gosh! So yeah, <laughs> I feel a, like I feel like you're still in that program, honestly. Like I see these videos, and I'm like, oh yeah, there's David. So I <laughs> I feel like you still go there, in my opinion. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know yeah. you don't actually. I'm free. <laughs> I'm a free man. <laughs> Did you yeah. do the four years or the two year diploma? I did the four year di uh, okay. diploma, the four year degree. Degree, Ooh, yeah. The four year diploma. That would be. <laughs> cool. I've been here for four years. So I only get a diploma. That would be that really would be depressing. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm curious to hear more about your choir days because you kind of took your choir days into into McEwen because you still did like the jazz band right afterwards and the a cappella group. I know you were in. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I did the a cappella group in my first year, and that was mm -hmm. actually not really like. I didn't choose to to be put in that like in first oh. year they just because everyone uh who who isn't aware basically when you go to McEwen in like the beginning of the, uh, the semester or the beginning of the year I suppose they audition everyone and they place you in ensembles and so I was just like in first year I didn't know what any of the ensembles like like what their deals were and I was like just put just put me in something and so I got put in acapella which was actually really 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 fun, really fun. So, yeah. yeah yeah super cool and what kind of choir were you in when you were younger was it just like a basic standard like kind of school choir or it was um it was called the the Edmonton Junior Children's Choir um oh, okay. so a bit of a mouthful but that yeah. was um it was like uh, I guess yeah sort of a choral so more like um classical kind of oh, okay. we did some contemporary stuff as well actually but but sort of very sort of traditional kind of choral traditional, um, 
music and actually it was like a, a lot of fun. Um, yeah. In hindsight, but obviously, like I was when always you're young. Yeah. I don't want to do things. I know. I know. I remember my mom used to always make me try and go into the, like I would do it most times, but she'd always be like, "You should sing in the Sunday church choir." And I was like, "No, mom. Like I don't no, want mom. to. I don't want to do it. Please don't make me." <laughs> exactly. But I think if I had taken more opportunity to be active in that choir, I could have gotten a lot better at like harmonizing faster and like just like memorization. So I think like choir and as much as it seems like really dorky when you're younger I think it does have value to some oh, extent, so yeah absolutely <laughs> all right and Pablo do you want to tell us a little bit more about your journey how you got from point A to point B yeah for sure so my journey kind of started with uh musical theater actually uh I've begun with musical theater since I was maybe six or seven and then I think uh as I mentioned last time I began with piano but it did not work at all for me decided it was not my instrument at all but then one day my mom pulled out of her closet like a guitar that she had when she was a kid and she was like just try this and I took a couple classes and I fell in love with it and after that I started playing guitar all over the place I played in the band in school for guitar and then I think it was like Dave said I uh, started hitting like different open mics and from then, I guess I decided, hey, maybe I should try something else besides open mics. I wasn't satisfied with just what the open mics did. Usually you only have two or three songs to play right. and then you step off. And, and I guess I said, you know, I want to do more than just an open mic, play my own gigs and stuff. And, and that's where it all sparked. Mm -hmm, really cool. Which open mics did you guys play at out of curiosity? I played at the different cafes. Uh, I remember Blackbird, which is one of the venues that Yak Music does, has every now and then an open mic. Uh, there's a couple cafes near Capilano Mall that also have open mics. Uh, Blue Quill, if anyone lives near it, they also have open mics in their community centers every now and then. Oh, I didn't know that. I live like yeah. 10 seconds away from it. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every now and then oh. they have in the community center open mics and they have little oh. events and you can join in. Cool. Awesome. I'm gonna have to go there <laughs> now that I know well, when I can go there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. How about you, David? <laughs> um, the, the main one that I did was uh, back at Cha Island, if, if you remember oh, Cha yeah. Island, if anyone. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, with, uh, with Rhea March on Sunday evenings. Yeah. Um, and that was really, really good. And, and like, yeah, Rhea is always super encouraging and, and just helpful. And I think that helped me kind of get my feet off the ground of like, how, how do I musician what am i i don't know what i'm i mean you know i still don't like know what i'm doing i suppose but, you know, i know a little bit more so. no absolutely i agree i think it's a really good starting point to start it like i think anyone who wants to become a musician or even a busker should start at that open mic level because it's a really friendly environment and there's really like even people that go to open mics aren't very good or they're maybe they're a little bit older and they're like i don't think i sound good like i think it's a very friendly and like warm and accepting environment because it kind of has to be right like it's it's kind of like karaoke too like when you see someone go up to karaoke you're like okay either gonna be really bad or really good but you yeah. know it's yeah. karaoke so <laughs> all bets are off the table <laughs> that's awesome well that's really yeah. cool to hear um when did you start busking what year did you guys start busking or what time of your life oh oh i'll jump in <laughs> uh, the um so it was the year that I was um just out of high school I think if I remember correctly so that would have been like 2015 2015 mm. I think and I started busking at the the old Strathcona farmers market mm. I was sort of lucky enough to um I think they had like they have like a waiting list and stuff and you sort of e apparently you, you're supposed to email people and like you're then they'd be like email you back and be like please come in and audition or whatever wow. but I just showed up one time and was like, uh, how do I how do I busk here? I have my guitar, and, <laughs> and they were like, oh, okay. Uh, do you want to just play something for us, like in like the, the office? And I was like, okay. And then so I went out and played something. They're like, okay, cool. You can busk here. And I was like, oh, all right. Um, so that's where I that's where I started busking. Was awesome. it uh, was it the old strength kind of cool? How about you, Pablo? See, for me, I think the first time I bust was actually on White Ave. Um, Every time I would like come from university, I would go down the bus and see people just busking in random spots of, of White Ave and, and just said, you know what, I want to try it sometime. I've, like I said, I've been tired of open mics. Yeah. Um, 
I've seen people do it. I think it's fun. And, you know, you see it in the movies. There's always the busker outside in the love story. The couple goes by and sees them. And I'm like, maybe, <laughs> maybe I can beat that guy from the movie. So I took on White Out. And I remember because I did it right beside Block 1912. Mm, yeah. Uh, awesome. Up there. And mm-hmm. just, just had that spot and, and began busking there. And then yeah. afterwards, I started seeing what other spots I could start busking at. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is, mm. qu- there is quite a variety of places. I think people think that Edmonton lacks like those communities or those spots for buskers. But I think if you look in the right places, there's definitely a lot of opportunity if you're kind of looking for it, right? So mm. super cool. Um, what made you guys want to start busking? Like, and I know kind of Pablo, you kind of said a little bit, but what was like the really, what really pushed you to be like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Like, I'm going to try to try it out. So when, before I even started doing like gigs with like Yeg Music and other organizations, I wanted to make sure that the songs that I would play were popular, that people actually enjoyed them. Like you said, that I wasn't just the guy at karaoke that everyone's like, oh, maybe it's, it's a good singer or a yeah. bad singer. Yeah. So to test the waters and see if people actually enjoyed my originals and, and the covers that I made. So that if they did enjoy it, I mean, you can notice it because people give you tips and, and people smile at you and say, hey, I really like this song. Yeah. But that way it gave me like a reassurance that if I do want to do gigs, that at least I know what music to play and that people actually like it, that I'm not just booking a gig and I'm going to, well, not make a fool of, out of myself, but right. just <laughs> not have a crowd enjoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a friendly environment. Like no one's going to throw tomatoes at you. Honestly. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So th- yeah, that was the idea to test the waters, make sure that people actually enjoy the music that I was playing right. before I actually set up a gig. Right. I really like that actually that you, that your reasoning behind it kind of was, I want to see what people's reactions are before I play live. Like, I think that's really cool because I think a lot of musicians don't really think that way which is not a bad thing at all but I think that's really cool that that was kind of your approach David what was your approach when you started busking I think for me when I was yeah sort of in my year between between high school and university and I like Mm -hmm. I was working at like a like a like a fast food restaurant basically and so I didn't really enjoy that very much and so (laughs) so when I kind of realized that I could like make a little bit of money by like just going somewhere and playing songs that I enjoy playing anyway. Right. And I was like, wait, like, hang on. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is cool. So, so I, it was just like a really, it was like on, it was like a Saturday mornings I'd go and just like something else that just felt like a lot more rewarding to me yeah. um, compared to just the job I was working. And I was like, hey, I can like, you know, make a little bit of, a little bit of cash, just, just playing songs that I like playing and, and people seem to enjoy it. So mm-hmm. cool. Totally. And I think like sometimes depending on like the night or the busking event, you can make more money than you would at like a, like a, like you said, like a fast food restaurant job. Like sometimes you can make even more or like, I mean, it really is hit or miss with busking. That is the only thing. Oh, absolutely. Because I'm sure you guys are comfortable, like very familiar with, but um, those awesome days where you're like, wow, like I could have worked a six hour shift and made this like, and I made this in busking like an hour. Right. So I think it has definitely pros and cons, of course, but I think that's one of the coolest things about busking. And I know myself, like um, I worked in the service industry, so it's kind of like that because there are days where you can make really good money. And then there's days where you can make like, you know, like your 10 to 30 bucks and you're like, well, that was a waste of my life today. (laughs) So (laughs) that's kind of how I felt with, I could relate to busking. Um, So what gigs, my next question kind of is what gigs do you prefer to play? So there's obviously lots of different types of gigs you can accept as an artist, but like my question is more like those corporate straight paid gigs. Like I'm trying to take an example, like maybe a farmer's market gig where they pay you a certain amount or a cafe hires you to play an hour set, or do you prefer to do busking gigs? What in your opinion would you kind of gravitate towards if you were presented with both options? That's a good, that's a good question because there's there's different types of gigs right i've played for like community shows that happen like a year celebration uh there's uh events happening on like the north side that they do a three-day celebration and you can get a couple spots playing Mm. um you can have the normal set gigs where they hire you to play for an hour and then you know or you can have the busking gigs so i think it depends on the season to be quite honest true because some of the events that you can get hired to or events at restaurants, they'll be like, hey, here's a deck, come play outside. It's gonna be fun, you get a free drink, you enjoy it. 
But when it's like winter time, you don't want to be busking because most places that you do busk are freezing. If you ever busk with the city of Edmonton, all yeah. the train stations are freezing. I know. Freezing. So you, warm. <laughs> you don't want to bust there because your hands freeze off, your guitar gets damaged. Yeah. So if it's like winter time, a nice indoor place is the perfect gig. But yeah. in the summertime, playing outside for events is, is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And I know like even in the summertime, as awesome as it is to have uh like let's say you're playing on white ab and there's a festival going on there are those days because edmonton is so unpredictable of having like your super rainy days or your days where there's like it's so sweltering hot and there's bugs everywhere and it's just like i can imagine <laughs> like you know there's the perfect season ideally is summer right of course to play it but i think even summer has its its downfalls yeah. too right like just how i'm sure you guys have dealt with the weather changing like instantly and you being like, okay, oh, yeah. well, I guess I got to pack up now. Like, I guess I'm done for the day or, you know, yeah. you really don't know when it'll stop too, which I think would be super difficult for you guys to kind of navigate. Mm -hmm. So I respect that this, um, and David, what kind of, which gigs would you prefer to take? Hmm. I find like in terms of like, just like the predictability thing, doing mm -hmm. like corporate stuff is, um, is usually like obviously more predictable yeah. i find luckily though like most of those gigs usually happen in like evenings so i've never really had too many that i can think of like too many situations mm -hmm. where i've been like i have to choose between like mm -hmm. either i want to busk or i want to do a corporate gig so yeah. i've kind of always been able to do a little bit of both but i find um yeah just being able to do it like a corporate gig usually and, and have a predictable sort of like paycheck at the end is, is always yeah. helpful. Not that I like, obviously yeah. I enjoy busking and it's kind of a different thing and you're just be able to sort of be a bit more relaxed. Um, right. But yeah. So I yeah, guess absolutely. Pros and cons, so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this kind of ties into what Pablo was talking about before um, just with like unpredictability of like, you know, the train stations being freezing, even though they claim they have heaters, I swear they don't work. I swear they never work. But anyhow, um, as we are people who live in Canada, what is your advice for busking during different seasons? What are some tips and tricks you guys maybe have to get through busking in, I guess, colder climates or even during the summer climates when it's unpredictable? What kind of tips would you guys give to other buskers? Hmm. Um, I think, obviously, I think there's quite a few, like, markets and stuff that do indoor obviously mm -hmm. the old strathcona is i think year-round indoor yeah so so that's always good uh like in the winter in the winter months because i think it's heated in there if i remember correctly and I so. um i know the city market downtown i believe has an indoor space i know they were in city hall for a while i'm not sure if the, i think they have a new space now so finding like markets and, and places where there's there's an indoor place to busk is really really good because like busking out in like minus 30 is i mean it's not good for you it's not good for your guitar probably no one's gonna be out there <laughs> yeah. so yeah totally. yeah what do you think pablo on that i i definitely agree with david on that but i would say especially just be prepared for whatever happens mm -hmm. so if you're gonna busk in the summer definitely bring a water bottle with you because yeah. you're gonna go oh, yes. through it really quickly mm -hmm. um if you're gonna busk in like fall make sure to bring some gloves or a nice jacket because the weather's getting really cold and when you're gonna busk in winter like david said go to markets go to events that you know are indoors and heated because mm -hmm. it's gonna suck if you don't there's <laughs> that there's like every now and then there's events happening in september and you think okay it's fall it's gonna be nice right and two septembers ago i was helping with an event and literally the day that i was going to perform it snowed so <laughs> If the day before it was like really nice weather <laughs> just like a nice jacket and you're fine but the day after when i was about to perform on one of the main stages it snowed it snowed and, and they had to cancel it they had to like remove yeah. everything switch all the spots so if it's winter time and you want to busk find an event that is indoors but yeah. any other season make sure you bring either a jacket or some water because you're going to need it especially if you want to busk for a couple hours it it pays off to, to come prepared. Totally. I agree. <laughs> Cause with Edmonton, you never know if we live somewhere like LA, maybe it's a little bit more predictable, but we live in Edmonton. So it's got its uh, pros and cons. <laughs> yeah. um, can you guys maybe explain to me the strangest experience you've had with busking so far? Maybe that's like a certain comment you got or a certain like reaction from a, 
crowd member because I know with busking it can be in different environments where there's sometimes like alcohol involved or there's like just it's really open right like anyone can see you busk and anyone can walk by so maybe if you guys have a strange experience you've had that you could share with us oh um do you want to go first Pablo or I uh, know you go ahead. You okay, go ahead. I'm, okay. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Okay, right cool. I, I already have. I'm like, oh gosh. No. <laughs> okay. um, I had uh, actually, I had this was like a year and a half ago in the fall. Um, I was busking and this guy came up and sort of like obviously kind of like a not not so great looking guy, but mm -hmm. but obviously like when I'm busking, there's been plenty of like you know people that you know don't look you know, particularly well off that are, that are really kind or just are happy to listen or whatever. So, you know, I'm not the kind of person that's going to be like, hey, what, what are you doing? But this guy sort of uh, like bent down and sort of muttered something about my CDs and then like took like a $10 bill and like ran off with it. <laughs> and just like, and I was right by an LRT station. So he just like peaced out and I was like, well, okay. Oh no. <laughs> so the, and there was like, there was nothing I could, I could really do. So I just, yeah. I just kind of, it wasn't wasn't the best day. I mean, he probably needed the money more than I did, but uh, right, you know, yeah, not not the best not the best situation to be giving people money. Yeah. So there you, go. <laughs> you have to be careful. <laughs> yeah, because like, you're just an open. You can't just be like, sorry, I don't have any change. It's like I have a full guitar right. case of, of money. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can't really say that excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And do you guys? I know, like, if you do get lots of tips, is there at some point? Is there a point where you will? like put it away from the guitar case like put it somewhere else just to protect it like kind of what's your procedure with that that you've had experience with i i've kind of like i never know i feel like it, some people are like i always like put a like a 20 in, or i'll put like whatever right. to like um or I'll, if someone puts something in then they'll leave it there or whatever and i it's kind of difficult i've always tried to like analyze the psychology of how much money <laughs> should be in the case because sometimes i'm like the more money that's in there it seems yeah like more people are like oh there's already look you must be good here. yeah uh and then other times you know i'll just be like playing they'll be like i'll have put like a, a loony and a toony in or something to start with and then someone will just come and be like here's like 20 dollars yeah know? okay so yeah <laughs> but i i kind of have always just played it by ear maybe i I will take if someone gave me like a there's been a couple times someone gives you, gives you like a 50 or something and they'll usually like hand it to you because you know yeah you yeah. don't just want to have like a 50 sitting around or getting blown away but right yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be I really unfortunate yeah yeah that's awesome and pablo have you, have you ever had this strange experience or maybe a less than ideal experience asking i've had a similar experience that david right mentioned that someone just like looked in they were picking one of my business cards and they ran off with money that was in the case. But one that I remember fully, I was playing at this uh, event and this guy was definitely, definitely drunk. And he comes up to me and starts yelling, you suck, you suck. But then says, you suck, but play me another one. <laughs> and I'm like, do I suck or do you want me to play you another one? <laughs> like, like, if you have a request. Yeah, like if you have a request, <laughs> just let me know, I'll, I'll, I'll play it. But it was just funny because he kept like yelling, you suck, but then, he would pause and then be like, play me another one. Oh my gosh. And I'm like, I, I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> You're like, I'm abusive bored. relationship. I don't <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I mean, it, obviously at certain points, you guys can kind of tell right away like the, the state of people's minds depending on like the event too, right? Like, yeah. I mean, if you're going to play outside of Roger's place and there's a concert going on, an Oilers game, you can kind of expect that there'll be some very, interesting individuals yeah. that will you know kind of pass your way that are i mean sometimes very generous and sometimes they're very not so generous so it just depends <laughs> on the individual right for yeah. sure um my next kind of question is how do you guys recommend for people maybe to overcome the fear starting out their first busking gig because i know when i talk to a lot of artists just about busking in general a lot of them are like, oh, I could never do that. Like, I don't know how people do that. Like, it's just so vulnerable. And like, you're just like, you never know what, what will happen, right? There's technically no organizer, if you will, like certain mm. farmers markets. Yeah, there's like an organizer, yeah. but there's no one really to be watching and to see like, if someone came up to you and says, you know, when they're drunk and saying, you suck, like there's no one to really regulate that. So what would you kind of recommend to people that are maybe fearful of experiences like that? So if it's not a regulated event like that, or if you just want to start out uh, like I did, just 
have little to no expectations. Don't expect that you're going to get a lot of money. Mm. Um, make sure that you understand that you're going to be nervous because if it's your first time, whether it's on White Ave, whether if it's downtown, if it's on an ETS station, just don't expect too much. Just take deep breaths, play whatever you like to play, and then you'll start seeing. You'll start seeing people saying, oh, I like this song. Oh, you start seeing people just nodding their heads at whatever you're playing. And, and then you'll know, okay, that's a song that I can repeat in half an hour so that I know that people like it so I can keep playing. Mm-hmm. So just make sure you, you keep your stay aware of the audience and who's walking around the reactions to whatever song you're playing. Okay. But really just don't expect too much. Just have fun with it. Take some deep breaths. You might make $5 or you might make $35. Right. Just, just don't expect too much and, and go for it. It's, it's, it's about having fun. Yeah. I mean, and- the thing of busking is for me is having fun itself. Mm-hmm. Totally. And I kind of, I'm curious to know what your guys is, um, what, like, do you typically like Pablo, you were talking about rotating your sets and everything. Um, do you guys typically have like a set kind of half an hour and then you rotate or do you guys plan for an hour? Like what's your typical kind of set time, if you will? I do like, I try and play as many songs as I can before I have to like repeat stuff. Right. Um, so at uh, like the city market downtown, it's like three hour slots. So that's like wow. a lot of, a wow. lot of tunes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I kind of, I kind of see it as like a challenge. I'm like, how many songs can I learn and like not repeat? And usually like by the last like half hour, 45, I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw in the one I did already. Right. Um, <laughs> so I, I kind of have like a, maybe like a big repertoire and I kind of usually have ones I start with, and then ones I'll do in the middle and then kind of ones I do at the end or, or ones that I know are pretty good that I could repeat. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't have like a, like a half hour sort of loop that I'll do or an hour. I usually just kind of play it by it. ear. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. See, I have like the hour rotation, mm-hmm. but then That's I have good. specific songs that I look at the audience and see what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had couples that just stand right beside me and they're like enjoying the song and even they sing along. So I'm like, okay, this, I, I might repeat this one after I've done the, the full hour rotation mm-hmm. or I see a song or I, I play a song and people, I don't see anyone really enjoying it. So I'm like, okay, okay. Once the rotation is done, I'm not going to play that one again right. tonight. Yeah. I think that's important too. Cause especially like if it's like, I know people obviously will react to more like classic songs or like t- songs that are really popular at the time. I can imagine those would be kind of like your, and especially again, if you're playing at an Ed Sheeran concert, and you're playing right outside the front busking area, obviously you're kind of going to want to play the Ed Sheeran songs to encourage, <laughs> you know, the excitement and the hype people have for the concert. And I imagine you would make way more tips if you were being considerate of your, of your audience, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we David, definitely got to yeah, gotta play yeah. the songs that are popular at the moment to, to make sure that people totally. enjoy it. As much as maybe sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you <laughs> have to. <laughs> David, do you have any uh, tips of kind of like, how anyone can get past that initial fear of busking as well um yeah i think pablo had like sort of hit the nail on the head of like not having sort of an expectation of mm-hmm. of either it being really bad or it being really good because it is because even like having done it for like five or six years now it's like there's just so much that like i'll go sometimes and i'll have like a completely different experience mm-hmm. or something new will happen um so so just being able to kind of accept that sometimes it's not going to be great sometimes it's going to be awesome yeah. um and and also that your like musicianship or so whatever if if you're self-conscious about like your own if you're playing originals if you're self-conscious about that or you're playing or you're singing or whatever it is mm-hmm. not sort of equating people's disinterest with your mm-hmm. uh your own like ineptitude i guess like like people like you know sometimes i'll play stuff and i'm like man i'm like crushing it right now and like nobody <laughs> like nobody is paying attention and you're just like well here we are so, yeah yeah and then when you're like crap in the bed everyone's like yeah, yeah you're like, this what? is terrible stop listening no <laughs> turn away turn away ah! yeah i love that that's hilarious um can you guys tell me about an experience where you had the best memorable experience with busking maybe that was someone singing long or like you know little kids I know they love to get involved with buskers what was kind of your most memorable experience you've had so far with busking I think for me uh there's this these group of friends who would always come and visit me when I was busking at at Century Park they would they would know that I would play there on Monday 
in the afternoon. So after their schooling, they would come in and watch me play for a couple minutes and then they'd, they'd go home. Um, and I got to talk to them for like the span of six months. Every Monday we would talk um, and I would play. And then I stopped busking for maybe three months and then I went back to it and they were there and they said, hey, we missed you. We didn't know what happened to you. Um, and then they gave me the surprise that uh, one of the songs that I played became like their their song and they got engaged to that song. Wow. And That's super cool. I haven't seen them for a year now, but I'm hoping that that things worked out. But yeah. it was just nice that they said that, like, you know, it was my music that kind of inspired them to, like, pursue the relationship between them, each other and mm -hmm. all that. That's really that's cool. Awesome. That's Yeah, that's something super treasurable. I think as an artist, anytime someone has an experience with your music and it's memorable for them, it's, like, the biggest compliment you can get. And I know, like, once you're, like, celebrity status, people kind of are like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, I know my songs are amazing and they make people propose to each other or whatever. But, like, I think it's, it's as a local artist, it's really, like, a huge compliment to have. Yeah. That. Yeah, totally. What about you, David? Sure. Uh, I think what I'm thinking of is one time I played, well, I did a couple summers. I played at, like, The Fringe. And I remember, like, sometimes, again, like, even at the Fringe, it's, like, really bumping, but some sometimes you just, the people are already, you know, busy going to shows or whatever's happening. But I remember one Sunday afternoon, and it was, like, really nice weather, and, like, I got, like, a crowd of people, and I was like, what do I, what do I do with this? What's going on? <laughs> um, and so I got, I got people, like, singing along with stuff or doing, doing uh, different parts, and I was like, okay, you sing this, I'll sing it back, and just, like, like had a super good time. And then afterwards people were coming up and talking to me and being like, Oh, I do it. just like having that sort of like out of nowhere. Like, and then that was the only time that that happened. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and it was just like completely, you couldn't have predicted it. I mean, you know, sometimes it'll be great weather and people will just, there'll be a couple people standing there, but it was just like probably like 20, wow. 20 to 30 people. I think that were just like, and you're like, Oh yeah, cool. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. I love that. Um, and I, I have time for one more question here and I know we may have chatted about this, but really think and tell us kind of what you think are some of the hidden obstacles of busking that people maybe don't consider that you have to go through as a musician compared to maybe just like a typical, like cafe gig. Like what are the differences of the obstacles that maybe you guys face that and another artist may not necessarily face? Um, there's a couple obstacles that I can recall, uh, that people need to take in to consideration when busking in Edmonton particularly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to busk in any ETS station, you need to actually have a pass yes. that you need to get. So be ready that if you don't have one, you can get kicked out, <laughs> whether it is by the person who has the pass for that spot or by security from ETS. Yeah. Um, as well with busking anywhere really downtown, most places can actually like tell you to leave, especially on White Ave. If you're mm -hmm. close to any store and they feel that you're an obstruction to their customers, to keep that in mind because they can't push you. So be careful in the spots you pick, the corners you pick, because you can disturb stuff. So keep those in mind. And, and yeah, I think those. Um, with White Ab, do you need a license as well to play? Is it Does that license cover like everywhere in the city or is it just for? No, that license that you get from the city of Edmonton is just for any city of Edmonton like parts itself. Oh, okay. uh, anything run by, by the city. On White Ave, you can kind of play freely. Just, again, they can ask you to leave. And if anyone hears you playing stuff that's profanity or, or really right. loud, they can also ask you to leave. Right. Because I know, like, on a Friday night, if it's bumping on White Ave, there's some very interesting, obscure buskers that... <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yes. ...that have oh, yeah. garbage cans taped together and are, oh, gosh, using drumsticks to play <laughs> their creation. And, I'm, I mean, it's creative to an extent, but... Yeah, I've seen some very interesting buskers for sure. Um, yeah. David, what do you think are some obstacles that maybe you've overcome that you kind of want to, like, just vocalize as being different from just being a regular musician? Um, I would say being aware of, like, how, how, you're, how you sound to mm. the audience. So, like, um, in particular, like, if you're amplifying, having a good, like, busking amp. Yeah. Um, stuff like that not being and being aware of like not being too loud or not being too quiet and 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 that sort of stuff because i've had like i know i actually this was at fringe as well like i started busking and like i had this tiny this tiny battery powered amp that's another thing actually is is you know lots of places don't have power and if you want to amplify right. you gotta have a battery powered yeah. amp mm -hmm. um but i had this tiny like 
the one that I bought that just like it couldn't it could not handle like more than like one input that was like and like on a busy street um and so you know that just make, it makes a huge difference like what sort of uh gear you have and I know like you know Long and McQuaid does rentals and stuff so that's usually what I'll do in the summer if, is I'll rent an amp um yeah mm -hmm. but uh yeah that's what I would say is just being aware of how you sound and and thinking about okay like what's this space and am I being, do I need to be a bit louder here? Am I being sort of overwhelmed or do I need to tone it down a bit if it's more of a, you know, low key type thing? So, yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just about being considerate too, right? That's something yeah. you also have to consider. All right, guys. So that is actually all the time we have for today. My timer's ticking down. Once again, <laughs> thank you so much to David and to Pablo for joining us on the show today. I'm Millie Rouge. This roundtable has been brought to you by Egg Music. So make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell button to be notified when all of our shows come out. Uh, we release our shows Monday to Friday. And I, again, want to thank you guys for coming on. And I'll let you guys sign off. And Thanks. then we're out for the day. <laughs> Bye. Stay safe, guys. Yeah, take care. Bye. Bye.